Um, so, what sets New Zealand apart from filmmaking in other countries you've worked in? Crew, skills, people, lifestyle, ease of work, etc. New Zealand is a terrific place to make films because of, first of all, because of weather. Uh, because of the amazing uh, place that uh, Peter Jackson has created there. It's, uh, you, you, you feel very much that it is, um, I, I don't know if it's a cottage industry there, although that sounds a little pejorative. I don't mean it that way. It's just so local. Everything there is so available and so uh, it seems somehow more scaled kind of in, much more to humans <laughs> than, you know, uh, various places can be, you know. I remember back in the old days, you go on, you know, go on the universal lot and the first thing you do is get lost. <laughs> you know, New Zealand is just, it's a great place. I'll always obviously associate it with the Lord of the Rings films, which meant so much, I think, to filmmaking. And, and in some ways, you know, it was the Lord of the Rings that ushered in, ushered uh, Avatar, the possibilities of Avatar because of the work that Andy Serkis did as, as Gollum. So I'll always associate it with that. And uh, uh, it's just, it's a beautiful environment over there, you're far away, you have nothing to do except make the movie, you know, uh, and uh, yeah. Um, can you describe what it's like working in New Zealand and working with the New Zealand crew? Uh-huh, yeah. Well, the, new, uh, the Kiwis are, they're a terrific people as a, as, a, as a group. You know, I get along very well with them. Uh, they're, they're proud, they're competent, they're, uh, they're diligent, they show up on time, they get the work done. They're very proud of their own industry there as well and of their heritage too. And so uh, you get there, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of respect. You need to respect them and they respect you right back. And there's, they're, they're low key, they're not nearly as, um, as a people, and I don't mean to profile people as a people, but, but they're not as kind of blatantly aggressive, I think, as, as perhaps we are as, as Americans. So when you get there, it kind of, ca you can kind of lighten up just a, a little bit, it seems to me. Okay, so at what point did you and Jim first discuss the idea of your returning to play an important role in The Way of Water and the subsequent Avatar sequels? And were you surprised to be back from the dead? I was, um, I was alerted to the fact that my character would be coming back as early as 2007 even while we were making the original Avatar. Um, if, if Avatar, if I had not perhaps, you know, accomplished the role, uh, he might have rethought that. But the truth of the matter was, I think that Quaritch came out very well and he enjoyed, we enjoyed working together and more importantly, he enjoyed working with me, I suppose. Uh, and so I was asked, to return and he liked, I think the main thing is that he really liked the character. He liked the where the character had been and where the character could go. And uh, I remember having a terrific dinner with him in probably 2010, where he started to kind of outlay the, the foundations of where the character might go, the fact that he would be uh, go, undergoing a change, obviously, and, uh, and that, but he would still be very much, and Jim was always adamant about this, he's not going to be, he, you know, it's not going to become a, he's not going to become a tree hugger, this guy. He's still going to be, you know, fundamentally quaritch, because that's who, because that's who we love to hate, or whatever, you know. So, uh, and then the, the, the evolution of, of, of the role, it just, it happened through the writing and then as it was written and through the acting of it and through the kind of the back and forth uh, on the set where we would, I think, constantly tweak and massage and change things to, that, that made sense and advanced the cause of both the story and the character. Uh, how is this iteration of Quaritch different from the man we met in Avatar? Could you explain the idea of a recombat recombinant? Mm -hmm. And what can you tell us about Quaritch's relationship with the RDA? What about his relationship with the character of Spider? Mm -hmm. Ah, that, there's a number of things uh, in, in there. Quaritch is, uh, Quaritch 
the new courts, the reconstituted courts, or resurrect, no, not resurrected, it's really reconstituted. It is a new courts, but there's a lot of the old courts in him. They've still got the fire, he's still got the aggression, he's still got the singular vision that courts had. But that has now been, I won't say leavened, but it's combined in a way with this, uh, with the way of Ewa, with the way of water, with uh, Pandora has gotten into his bloodstream. And that's going to have all kinds of uh, repercussions on how he behaves, how he moves, how he thinks, how he feels, uh, how his, what, what, what does it do to his spirit. So those are all issues that I'm not going to answer because the answers are in the movie, uh, some of them, and, and they're questions that will continue to be asked and answered as this saga, you know, continues to progress. Um, his, uh, I think that his, um, his relationship with RDA is, is interesting. I think it's pretty cut and dried, in fact. I think that he was a contract player, as it were, for R RDA. There came a time when he was mustered out of, of the military. Uh, he goes into kind of private practice, as it were, and his, his, his skill set is, uh, is something that, that RDA can use. And, uh, and so he's hired for a price, and he does his job. And he does his job really, really well, until <laughs> he doesn't. But they've got an investment in him, and they consider him, they do the math, RDA. And, and, and he knows that. He knows they don't care about him. He doesn't care about them. It's a deal. Uh, but as the story, as the saga progresses, I think his relationship to RDA becomes more problematic, frankly, yeah. And his relationship with Spider, I won't say too much about that uh, at this point other than there is a, there's a history there uh, and that it's something that he, that he does not see coming at all. And it's something that I think affects him in ways that he would prefer not to be affected uh, until he maybe kind of, you know, gives into it at some point. Yeah, it's so much easier not to feel. Uh, in what way does Quaritch's return pose a real threat to Jake Sully and his family? And what is the dynamic between those two characters? Well, it poses this threat. I'm going to destroy, Quaritch is going to destroy Jake Sully and his family. That's the threat in a nutshell. Um, and the, the relationship between he and Jake is bad. It's uh, Jake, uh, Quaritch gave Jake every opportunity. He made it possible for Jake to, uh, to, 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 to redefine his purpose in life, to find a purpose in life when Jake had none. And essentially Jake spat in his face and betrayed him, and uh, that's unforgivable to Quaritch. One more. Uh, did you approach the character differently this time around? And if so, in what ways? What did you do to prepare to play Quaritch once more? Uh, there's always the physical preparation is always the, to me, it's a go-to thing with, with Quaritch because he uh, he's nothing if not strack. He keeps himself the way he wants to keep, he, he keeps himself the way he wants to be seen, you know, uh, which is in shape, uh, in shape to lead, because he's always going to be lead, leading from the front. Quartz likes to be visible. So the preparation was very physical, of course, and then there's, you know, there's a lot of talking about the character, but in the end, the talk is just the talk, you know, it's all about yeah, you can talk and talk and talk and talk, but then you really, you got to get on, you know, you get on the stage and, and, you, and, and you start to uh, explore, you start to kind of run your fingers through the dirt of the scene and, and try and, uh, you know, try and stir things up. And, and that's where you really find, uh, find the character. You can make all the plans in the world. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this with the character. Nah, it doesn't really work that way. You know, you just get yourself in shape, get yourself prepared for discoveries to happen and for surprises to occur. And so you can kind of deal with them. And that's how life happens on the screen. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much for your time. You've got it. Thank you.